Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we honor your holy name. We honor your holy name. Lord, thank you for the past 21 days we've been fasting. And today we've gradually come to an end. Thank you because none of them is in vain. Thank you for answered prayers. We give you praise. We give you praise. We honor you. We honor you, Jesus. We give you glory. Hallelujah. And sings my soul, my Savior, to thee. Listen to me, everyone. This is the last day of wine press and last day of our fast. I want your expectations to shoot out through the roof. I want the expectation to burst this whole place. Someone says, why? Because the Bible says there shall be performance to him that believe it. Glory to God. In one minute, can you express your expectation to God in prayer? Can you express your expectations to God in prayer? Just express your expectation to God in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a man in this place, a woman cursed you and said you will never do well. I'm not sure if it's your wife or your mom, but in the spirit, I saw you and a lady. The lady is dark in complexion. She cursed you and said, you will never do well. And that has stayed in your mind a lot because you've not been doing well. Where are you? Will you wave your hands? Will you, please sit. Please sit. Will you wave your hands? Now, I need someone to stay in the next auditorium to tell me because remember, I can't see. So where are you? I want to pray for you. If you just wave your hands above your head, then I will pray for you. Remember, if you don't wave your hands, I will not be able to pray for you. So we need to walk together. Some of you might feel very shy about it. I've not told you to come out. I've just need to raise up your hands anywhere you're sitting. Why need to? So someone says, why can't you just pray? Your raising up your hands is just a demonstration of your own faith. All right. And if you're raising up, okay. Okay, I've seen it. You can put it down. The anointing destroys the yoke. I break that curse. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break that curse. It's over now. Do well prosper in Jesus name there I saw my spirit about about I saw four people but it could be more than that you've had a delayed promotion let me explain what the delayed promotion is you're meant to have been promoted at work but something happened and you've not been promoted where are you will you stand will you stand just keep playing this in the background it's fine 
by the power of the Spirit, we are releasing your promotion. Will you receive it? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bible says promotion comes from God, not from the east, not the west. And through the ability of the Holy Spirit, we release that promotion now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You can have your seat. That's it. That's it. It's done. There's a lady. You have a certain leg problem. It's as if your leg will be grabbed. Then to release. Then to be grabbed. And this grabbing will bring you pain. Uh, you know, uh, maybe, maybe there's a medical name for it. Maybe, maybe, but maybe I don't know it. That's why I can't say it. You know, I don't know what it is. But you will feel, you will feel like within. There will be that. It's as you have to just like hook, like, you know. I, I don't know if I'm explaining it well. But if you're here, if you understand what I'm talking about, wave your hands if, I, if you're the person. Okay. Okay, you understand me. Put your hands at it. Put your hands on that leg. How oh, great the one. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, that leg problem. As the power of the Holy Spirit. Even now, in the name of Jesus. There's, there's someone else here. You have had a particular sickness for over 20 years. I, 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 I didn't see the sickness. What I saw was the time you've had it for over 20 years. Where are you? Where are you? Just wave your hands. Over 20 years. I can see. I can see someone at the back. See, remember there's a lot of people and it's not a very lit hall. So, if you don't raise your hands, well, I can't really see. Okay. Um, which pastor is here now? Pastor Leke, let me ask that person, does it have to do with, does it, does it manifest as a cough sometimes? It's not, it's not, it's not a cough, but maybe some of the symptoms will have to do with a cough. Over 20 years. Over 20 years. Okay, you're raising up your hand also for over 20 years. Does it manifest sometimes like a cough? Come and tell me. So what happens exactly? Okay. Yeah. It's really hard. And how long have you had it for? How many years? Um, over 20 years. Over 20 years. Come. How great the world. shall be showers of blessing
Yes. Loose her now. Yes. I command them family to go. It has to go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That oppression of the devil. It has to go now. Come out of it. said in my spirit to say to you remember Hannah only had Eli said may God of Israel grant you your petition and that was it I just had in my spirit to say to you the barrier is over now the barrier listen whatever it is maybe it's your husband's side maybe it's your wife's side whatever it is don't go back and say, you know, you have low sperm count. Don't go back and say you have hormonal balance. When you tell your wife, if you want to say, say, honey, the barrier is over now. The barrier is over now. The barrier. Listen, as I'm fit, talking to some of you, feel the power of God coming upon you. Come. The barrier is over now. That, 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 that power of the devil is broken. It's broken. Come back with your baby this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Declare with me, say, I'm coming back this year with my baby. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, choir. Let, 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 let's, let's look at the word of God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Glory to God. So the, you know, today's today's a special service. So oh, it's more, it's it's a service, but it's gonna be filled with the Spirit of the Lord, and it's always with the Spirit of the Lord. All I mean is that I, I want to to be able to release me to just flow as I would, you know. Glory to God. Galatians chapter 3. There is a man in this place. Your name is like A-J-A something. I, you know, I can't really spell what I'm saying. But you took a loan for a business, and it went really bad. And... um. You've got into trouble right now, financially. And God is saying to you that he will sort you out financially. And not only that, you are entering into a season of mighty promotion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Galatians chapter 3. Okay, so if you want to put people in the seat, if you want to, Pastor, I know you're trying to get more people to down. Maybe you can fill up the instrumentalist side, put a row beside them, because all of our halls are marked out right now, so we don't have space anywhere, you know. So maybe you can help me to pass that that if he's not hearing me. So be beside the musicians, we have a lot of space. We can put chairs and fill it up, you know. Hallelujah. So they're going to, they might have just added some new rows to you, so please just help us, you know. Don't worry, we're moving soon. Galatians chapter 3. So I want to talk to you quickly for about 15 minutes how to receive. How to receive. Who is that person I spoke about? Who is the guy I just spoke about your situation? At? Wait, let me see you. Because I can. Right here in front of me. Fantastic. What's your name? What? Ajibola. Fantastic. Fantastic. And th that's your. You, you took a loan and, you know, fantastic. Because I just saw AJ, you know, and I, I'm able to. Some, Someone says, why do we see like that? I don't think that God shows you half revelation. But because we are human beings, we know in part, we prophesy in part. God doesn't show half. It's we that know in part. We prophesy. And 
A prophet is going to get into trouble when he begins to say what our God has shown him. So sometimes you just have to say exactly what you've seen, just what you've seen. Sometimes even what you say doesn't even make sense. And that's why, you know, if someone doesn't stand or someone stands, it doesn't make a difference to me because I know what I've seen. If you don't want to stand, that's your problem. I want to divide the message of the Lord. That's fine. Glory to God. Like that brother in white and beards. Yeah, stand. Yeah. So, I saw in the spirit that you had a very active walk with the Lord. You were very passionate about the things of God. Then some things happened. And part of your heart was broken. I don't know if it was good or bad things that happened. And you just began to draw back. And you've even seen the impact of your drawing back in other things. And the Lord is saying that you have to go back to where you used to be. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure you know what it is. You know what it is, right? So you have to go back to where it is. I don't know what happened along the journey, but you have to go back to it. You're always better walking in the path of righteousness. Amen. All right. So Galatians, I'm talking about how to receive. Someone says, why are you talking about that? The reason is simple. Because it's the last day in case you're not sure you've received. So that you can be sure you've received. And if you have not really received, so that you can what? Receive today. So if I were you, I'm going to come with very clear expectations. Clear what? Expectations. Galatians chapter 3. Um, Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Let me see if I can read from here. Okay, this is good. It says, All foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Christ was being evidently set forth, crucified amongst you. The next verse, please. He says, This would I learn of you. Let's see what it says now. He says, I want to ask you a question because you've moved. You've moved. He says, This will I hear of you. Receive yet the Spirit by the works of the Lord. Remember when he said the Spirit, one of the biggest blessings God gave us is not a car. One of the biggest blessings God gave us is not a child. He's not even a husband. The biggest, when the Bible says the blessing of Abraham, the real blessing of Abraham is the salvation by the Spirit. That's the biggest blessing. That's one of the biggest blessings we have. So he says this, that receive ye the biggest blessing, the biggest blessing. How do you receive the bless, biggest blessing? He said, by the works of the law. Works of the law means by you doing something to earn it. No. But how did he receive the biggest blessing? He said, by what? By the hearing of what? Of faith. So, how do you receive the blessing? By what? How do you receive it? By what? Okay, so let's keep going now. Let's give verse 3. He says, are you so foolish? This what happens. He says, having begun in the spirit, you, because how did you receive the miracle? By hearing of faith. But all of a sudden, you want to help God. You want to support God. You want to bring yourself into it. He said, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Verse 4. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? And this way, this way it's powerful. Let's read together. I want to go. You know what he's saying? He said, the one that produces miracles amongst you. How does he produce miracles? By doing something or by the hearing of it. That's powerful. You know what they're saying here? He said the way you receive miracles is just by hearing the word of faith. You know, someone says, why do you have a conference for five days? You don't understand. Me, 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 I say, I'm going to learn Bible. We're not just learning Bible. One of the things that we're learning in the scriptures. But not just that. As we are hearing, the hearing of faith, miracles are happening. Someone say, how is that possible? Listen, because we are in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, when God spoke to them, watch this now, they had to do something. They had to do something, announce something. Naaman had, um, Naaman had to jump into water. Um, someone had to do something. In the New Testament, really, we don't really have to do anything. Someone says, why? Because in the New Testament, in the, New Testament the message is spirit. It's life-giving. The message by itself is powerful enough to make it happen. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me show you that. Second Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter, two, chapter 3, verse 6. Glory to God. Can you hear me well at the back? Can you hear me well at the back? All right, thank you. See what the Bible says. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
He says, who has made us able ministers of the New Testament? Now, when the Bible says New Testament, I know some of you think of Old Testament and New Testament. Uh Uh-uh. Think about it as agreements or contracts. So, see what it says. He says, we are ministers of the new contract. But what does he say? Not of the letter, but of the spirit. But what? For the spirit, for the letter kill it. But the spirit give it life. Watch what he's saying. I said, in the new contract that we have with God, there's health inside. In the new contract we have in God, there's joy inside. There's increase inside. There's peace inside. There's promotion inside. All those things are in the new contract. And you know what God said? God said the the new contract is so powerful because you don't have to do anything. It's a spirit. Once the contract is spoken, the spirit enters into you. Glory to God. So I say, okay, what does that mean to me? Oh, glory to God. Acts chapter 10. When Peter began to share the word of God, what happened? What happened in the house of Cornelius? No, come on, come on, people. In Acts chapter 10, when Peter began to share the gospel, what happened? The spirit fell. Why did the spirit fall? Because as the word is being spoken, the spirit is activated. The same way as Peter shared the word, the spirit fell. As I shared the word of prosperity with you, you prosper. As I share the word of increase with you, you prosper. As I share the word of healing with you, you are healed. On on Friday on the island church, Friday at the island church, I was just sharing like this. And, you know, I just said that, okay, you know what, let's stop the service for a bit too long. If you have been healed as I was sharing, stand up. And people began to stand up and say, I was healed of this, I was healed of that. But listen to me, I've not even prayed. Because in the New Testament, the prayer is not first. Once you are just hearing the word of faith, and that's what I want to say to you, whatever you miss in wine press, the CDs, if you were there, just go and get them. Bible says, he that doeth miracles, you want a miracle? He said, just hear the word of faith. Just sitting down here and absorbing the word, my God, miracles are happening, I'm telling you. Some of you are going to step out here and going to get a phone call that will change your life. I'm telling you, some of you are going to just step out and find out, my God, I've been healed. So I say, why? Because it's the ministry of the New Testament. As the word is shared, what is shared becomes your experience. As the word is shared, what is shared becomes your experience. So I say, how can you prove it? The Bible says that Paul was preaching in the place. And there was a guy that was laying in his feet. And you know what he said to him? He said, the Bible says, perceiving he had faith to be healed. How did he get that? As the word was said, the crippled feet stood up. He said, Christ makes thee whole. The man stood up. Because sometimes when you come to a service like this, you're waiting for the time when they will call your case. That can happen. When they will measure them, that can happen. But the biggest blessing is that you just sitting down under an anointed message. When the message is anointed, just by hearing miracles are happening already. But you need to know that that's what is happening so that you can release your faith. You need to know that's what's happening. So you're here right now. You're believing God to get married. In this atmosphere, you say, Father, thank you. I'm under the good news. I'm under the New Testament. In the New Testament, there is no lack. Every man has his own wife. Every woman has his own husband. I, I believe I receive. Praise God. In this atmosphere, you know, if I, let, let me just help you. Because sometimes you're like, oh, I want a pastor to touch me. It's wonderful. But I'm only saying that the primary way you receive a miracle is by what? By the hearing of faith. The problem is this. People are, the miracle are released. But because people are not taught, they walk away not knowing what they have received. And because they do not know what they have received, Satan is able to steal it easily. Pastor Dickie, where are you? I want to share that testimony you shared you know, earlier on today. And just, I want to just hear this testimony of a job. Is this working? Thank you. Praise the Lord. So, so you may not, Pastor Nicky is one of our pastors. Well, you will not see him here often. You will know him often if you're in, often. You know him, right? Okay, because one of our pastors, but he's in the Lekki Church. Um, he was he was AGM for Access Bank. You know, that's our stand journey manager. And if you are into IT or you use Uber, you would have seen that there's a company that takes out money called Flutter Waves, right? You remember that? Hmm? Yeah, so he's a co-founding director of Flutter Waves. And in um, maybe just about a year or two, they have maybe 80 to 100 staff that work in their company. So I wanted to hear this testimony. Yeah. Praise the Lord, church. So when I joined the church, um, more than 15 years ago now, um, I used to come to church. The pastor B used to be sleeping in my house. He's made a lot of fun about my house being a sloppy. But that's not the story today. 
There was time I was working in a bank and I started my career in the bank and the bank had crisis. It was during that solido crisis where banks had to consolidate. My bank didn't find a partner, so everything went under. And uh, I was working for like almost 18 or 12 months. We were seeing salary in the account, but we couldn't collect because there was no cash. So one of the days I was in service was a Tuesday service. Then it was in um, Spoon Feeder. We finished that service. It was a very powerful service. Pastor, we wanted to say benediction, and I said, no. If you are trusting God for a job, you can you just stand up? You know, like what we was talking about today, we thought he was going to lay hand on us. He said, no, just sing this song. Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. We sang it three times, all lifting up our hands, and we just shared the grace and went home. The next day, I went to see a friend in uh, Ladipo looking for a job. I got a call, and the person told me that I have done an interview before that. I should come for the final interview. Okay, I was still confused, you know, this for one and everything. So when it dropped, I called back the number to get the voice prompt of the company. From the company prompt, I knew the company name, so I, I went to check the address, and I went to the place the next day. did an interview for like 30 minutes, and I got the job. Now, because it was a God-defined ordained job, uh, I started at the entry level. In two and a half years, I was promoted like six times. When I was leaving, I was a manager. In the second promotion, I had a car. You don't get car until you're like level eight. That caused a lot of beef for me in the organization. When I left, I thought I was done. Then I went into banking that I left. Now, if you work in a bank, it takes you average 16 to 18 years before you can make an AGM, am I right? Because at AGM level, you can actually be a director in any bank. With God, nothing is impossible. It took me eight years before I became an AGM. So as the word of God is coming for tonight, hearing by faith, hearing by faith, it doesn't have to lay hands on you. A word can be spoken. Just accept it and receive it. Praise the Lord. I never knew who did the interview for me. Praise the Lord. But I knew I did the final interview. To God be the glory. Did you, did you understand what he just said? When they called him and said, you are doing the final interview, they have done others' interview. He had never met there before. So by the time he came for the final interview, that was the first time he would ever do an interview with that company. But do you know they are angels, right? Do you believe in angels? Let me tell you something. Sometimes angels look like human beings. They can look like you. Someone says, how do you know? The Bible says that when Abraham entertained strangers, he unaware that he was entertaining angels, meaning that they just looked like human beings. There was nothing to them. Some of you could be seen by an angel today. You will not even know. The second thing is this. Sometimes angels can look like you. Someone says, is that possible? Of course. The Bible says, when Peter came out of prison, when, see what the Bible says. When, what's that girl's name now? What? Rhoda. When Rhoda heard the voice, when they saw Peter, he said, is it Peter or is angel? Why would they say it's angel? Because there's a big theory there that sometimes the angels look like the person they protect. They say, is he Peter or is angel? You know why I'm saying this to you? Because many of you come from backgrounds where has the word of God has been taught you. You, you say, Lord, and until you release your faith and say, Father, I just release, I just take that word. You can have it. Some people will be in that service and say that, well, they didn't call my case, they didn't touch me, that's it. But the Holy Spirit just said, just receive like the ladies I prayed for, the barrier is broken. Is that enough for you? Listen to me. All God needed to make Lazarus come out was Lazarus' comfort. If dead body is comfort, ah, Lazarus, comfort. Three words for dead body. What is wrong with you is not that bad. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say Hallelujah. So I'm only saying to you that in the New Testament, I'm telling you right now, hey, hey, will you receive your jobs right now? Yes. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yes. You, you, you know what the Bible says? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says you are blessed going in, you are blessed coming out. The Bible says all the works of your hands are blessed. All of you in current paid employment, you have, a, you have your business. I declare that this year you will see the grace of God manifest. Yes. Phenomenal increase in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Somebody say amen. Amen. So in the New Testament, in the New Testament, the power of God is in his word. 
Bible says it this way. He said the word of, he said the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. As you are in this service, you are, see, let me tell you, you are sitting down on the ground of the miraculous. As you are hearing those words, you are hearing words of the miraculous. My God, as I'm speaking this word, there's an activation of spiritual power going in your direction to make things happen. And all you have to do is to receive it. Someone says, okay, how do I receive from God again? The way to receive from God is this, to always remind yourself, what I've received from the Lord is not based on me, based on Christ. Let me give an example. Um, his brother with his wife, where, where, where are they in the fire? Is your wife here? Come, two of you should come. Bring, bring your phone. Did he buy you this phone? He bought it for you. I can tell. So look at this phone now. This is, I don't know what, what's this? It's a Samsung phone. So just allow me, as I give this excuse, you know, as I say the story, it's not true. So she's from the village, wretched, has no, has no degree, just like a primary school girl, ties wrapped everywhere. They said to marry her. So she's really nobody. She's like, um, you know, where are you from? Edo State. So she's like, uh, uh, you know, just, just like that. So when he went to the Samsung company in, um, in, in, in the mall, he said, what's the latest Samsung phone? Samsung, what is that? Tell me the name. X9 or X10, X something. When he went there, how much is it? They said 400,000. Brings out his ATM card, pays for it and stuff like that. They said, where's the phone? He said, it's not available. He said, well, I didn't really want this phone for myself. I want it for my wife. She'll come and pick it. So he leaves. Of course, when he came, he was properly dressed. She comes the next day because the phone is not available to pick it with the receipts. And when she gets there, she dressed like a village girl, rubber band on her head. You know, shoes that did not match, wearing. The makeup was, you know, green and brown. And when she gets there, she entered the Samsung, she wants to enter the Samsung shop. They get around like, excuse me, where do you think you're going? This is a, this is a Samsung shop. People like you don't shop here. You shop, you know, Somewhere else, go to Mr. Price, that could fit you. This is a Samsung shop. You know, when she enters the shop, nobody attends to her because she doesn't seem like a, like, she doesn't like a profile customer. So when she enters, up, she later got the attention of someone and said, excuse me, nobody's talking to me. I said, what do you want, madam? You know, the way they are, what do you want? Because your market is not here. She now says, well, I don't want anything. This is the receipt that my husband used to buy my phone yesterday. I've just come to collect my phone. The moment she says that, what's the next thing? Madam, please sit down first. Yes or no? What she looked like, how she smells, how she behaves, does not matter again. Because someone has paid for what she's come to take. Somebody say hallelujah. Listen, why do we struggle to receive? This is how we struggle to receive. Because every time we pray... Instead of us to pray based on what Christ has done, we bring what we are doing to the scene. You begin to say, Lord, I'm a, Lord, I'm a prayer warrior. Lord, I'm a faster. Lord, I'm in the choir. Lord, I'm a tighter. Lord, I'm this and that. And I've told you before that all our righteousness, the Bible says, they are like fill the racks before the Lord. Do you know what fill the racks is in the Hebrew? The word fill the racks can also mean use menstrual part. Listen to me. Someone says, really? That's what it is like. When you say you are holy, right, righteous, it's like feeling right. The reason why is this. You know how holy God is? God is so holy that he's the one that defines holiness. Someone says, what do you mean? God is not a holy God. God is holy. Is holy. So when you say something is holy, that definition of holiness comes from God. And, but, but we keep bringing it up. You say, Lord, I've done this. Lord, I've done that. Th this is why we don't receive. Instead of it to say, Lord, I'm worth, I'm worth nothing. Lord, I'm a bush girl. Lord, I'm a village girl. But because he has paid the price. Someone says, how do I now receive today? What do you want to see? As you're in this church today, Satan says, hey, how can God touch you with all you have done? That's the thing. It's still coming back to you. Satan says, Satan, it's not about me. It's about him. It's about him. See, because if you turn the attention to me, I don't deserve a blessing. If you turn the attention to me, I don't deserve to be blessed. 
but it's about him. Why, how can I expect to be healed about him? The reason why is this. When Jesus hung on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, le max sabatini, meaning, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? You know why? Why did God forsake Jesus? He didn't forsake Jesus because Jesus did something wrong. He forsook Jesus because Jesus took my place that I may take his place. So he forsook Jesus so that he will never forsake me. He left Jesus helpless so that he will never leave me helpless. So when I pray today, watch this now. It's not about the fact that she can buy a phone or she dresses well. It's the fact that my partner has bought it for me. It, it see, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter what you think about me. The challenge is this, when you come to church, when you want to receive from the Lord, you allow Satan to tell you, do you deserve it? Do you want it? Do you think there can be a miracle? Oh God, thank you Jesus. There's a certain lady you did an abortion and because of that there have been childbed problems and childbed concern. The Lord should tell you that, you know what? You made the mistake in the, in the past and that's gone and it's a new beginning. And there'll be no problem, there'll be no problem. Listen to me, watch this now. The weapon in the hands of Satan is what? He uses, he uses condemnation and guilt. That's what he uses. Because watch this now. Once you are not, the way prayer works, prayer works on confidence. That's why First John says, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us. Watch this now. When there's no confidence in prayer, something has gone wrong in that prayer. And you know how Satan attacks your confidence? He begins to use guilt and condemnation in the place of prayer. So you pray for something. As soon as you pray, say, can you think God can answer you? Do you think that God will do it for you? Every time Satan says, I say that, that's the thing. He's not doing it for me. He's doing it based on what Christ has done. I want to ask you a question. Why do you think we're praying in Jesus' name? It's not as if we are praying through Jesus. We are saying, Lord, we are not the one praying. It's Jesus that is praying. So if you cannot say no to Jesus, you can say no to me. You don't know why? On the cross of Calvary, Jesus received a no on my behalf that I may always have a yes, a yes, a yes, a yes. That's on the cross of Calvary. He said, Father, Father did not answer. Why did the God neglect him? So that when I say Father, the host of heaven will respond to it. You know what I'm saying this to you? There is no reason why you should walk out of this service without a miracle. There is no reason. No, there is no singular reason why you should work out of this place. If you need an admission, receive it now in Jesus' name. If you need a healing, receive it now in Jesus' name. If you need a promotion, receive it now in Jesus' name. If you need finances, receive it now in Jesus' name. Whatever you desire, you have come to Zion where all things are yours. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone says, how am I sure I can receive it? Because of what Christ has done. You know the thing? She, she might never even value that phone. You know why? She never bought it. You know why you don't value what Christ has done? You didn't pay the price. So when just Christ see, so when she doesn't value the phone, her husband will say, ah, ah, do you know how much that cost me? Every time you are going through a tough time and bragging on your self-righteousness, just Christ said, ah, ah, do you know how much it cost me? Why are you not relying on what I've done on the cross? Listen to me. Why can I have a promotion? If Jesus cannot be done a promotion, I will not be done a promotion. If Jesus cannot be broke, Bible says you know the grace of Jesus Christ, that though he was rich for your sake, he became poor, that we through his poverty. Oh, glory to God. See, someone says, oh, can, can I give revelation? Oh, my God. Why did Jesus Christ die? Jesus died for what? For the forgiveness of our sins. Yes or no? He was raised from the dead for what? Our justification. So one, Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sin. Two, he was raised from the dead for our justification. But the third question I want to ask you is this. If he died for forgiveness of our sins, why did he die on the cross? Why did he die on the wooden tree? He could have died in the car. He could have died on the floor. Why, why did he? Because everything is symbolic. Why did he die on the cross? You know why? Galatians 3. The Bible says, because it is said, cursed is any man that hangs on the tree. You know why he died on the, on the cross? Because he took our curse by dying on the tree. Hallelujah. By the time he died on the tree, someone says, what do you mean? The tree was the... Will you receive it? Man ate the tree and fell from grace. 
Jesus died on the tree and brought us into grace. Man ate the tree and fell into out of the blessing. Jesus died on the tree to bring us into the blessing. Somebody say hallelujah. That's why he died on the tree. Why? Cursed is anyone. Listen, if he became cursed, do you know something? He wasn't cursed for himself. He was cursed with my curses. That I will not be cursed, but enter into the blessing of the Lord. Stand to your feet, let's pray. You know what I want to do today? Lord, not about me. Based on Christ, I received my promotion. Based on Christ, I received my job. Based on Christ, I walk in the blessing. Go ahead and receive. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. And as you're doing that, miracles will begin to happen in this place. Based on what Christ has done, I receive liberation from every addiction. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Based on what Christ has done, the ministry of the New Testament is being released right now. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Hore na koza prahalamantos. Based on what Christ has done, I receive my spouse. Based on what Christ has done, I receive my children. Based on what Christ has done, not even my prayer. Based on what Christ has done, I receive my increase, my promotion, my car, my house. Based on what Christ has done, I receive my job. I receive my promotion. I receive my house in the name of Jesus. I receive my rent. I receive finances. Based on what Christ has done. Hallelujah. He's paid the price for me. He went to the cross that by, by being on the cross, cursed, I may receive the blessing. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We're going to, this morning is special. We're going to do something prophetic. Is it sound on the drum set? When we're done it, I'm done. Something prophetic. Look for one, two, or three persons. Don't talk at the same time. Look to him. Say, sir, congratulations. It has happened for you. No, no, wait. Don't do it yet. Listen. The way you will behave, if that's the congratulation, you will now behave like that. When I say congratulation, it must connect with something, though. The, the congratulation. So, if you were believing God for a promotion before, when I say, when I say congratulation, just, just is that your boss? I say, just say congratulation. So, the way you behave, if you were believing God to buy a house in New York, I say, congratulations. So, don't just receive congratulation without receiving something because remember that your heart and your mouth must be aligned that's why I say don't say it together are you ready it's prophetic right <laughs> you know <laughs> glory to God just imagine you've got congratulations and you've got that job of your dream see, see I said once they congratulations to you you must do what you will do then someone say what are you doing Faith call the things that be not as though the way. Hallelujah. Faith calls the things that be not as though the way. Faith call the things that be not as though the way. Go ahead and say congratulations.
it and give it praise. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Because of Christ is done. The job is yours. The house is yours. The victory is come. The promotion has come. The change has happened. Hallelujah. The phone call has come true. The contract has been released. You've gotten the job. You've gotten married. The baby has come. It's done. It's done. By the power of the Holy Spirit. It's done. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please, you can have your seats.